Before I welcome uh, our next guest, I'm going to ask you guys all to find something that you have that looks a little like this. And it's okay if you don't know what it is or what it does yet. We're going to work through it together. Okay, looks like most people have it. Uh, as we do that, I'd like to welcome the Director of Scientific Outreach for IQC to the stage, Martin Laforet. Hi, Remy. So, what have you got for us today? Well, maybe just to put the audience in context, uh, maybe a couple months ago, Remy came to me and asked, it challenged me to teach quantum mechanics to 1,500 people, including making all of you do an experiment. Remember that? Yeah. And do you remember when you told me I only have five minutes? I think I said four at the time. Four you minutes? Asked for five. Okay, I got four minutes, 30 seconds. <laughs> Sorry, so. Here goes 36 hours of lectures, many thousands of dollars of lab equipment packaged down into four minutes, and a 50 cent slide. <laughs> so quantum mechanics essentially boils down to two rules. Okay? Rule number one is the one that Raymond was talking about in his uh, video, is the concept of superposition. So when you have quantum objects, we say that they can be, you know, they, they, we say they can be in multiple states at once. Really what we mean is that they can have contradicting properties, or that seems contradicting. Example, a single particle being here and there, an electron spin pointing up and pointing down, an atom being you know, in the ground state and in the excited state. You know, sounds contradicting? Like, well, we're all physicists here for a few minutes. Let's do an experiment. So take that your little slide. Okay? So that slide is what we call a polarizer, and we're going to work with light. So light as we may know, is an electromagnetic wave. So the electric field wiggles up and down, and the magnetic field wiggles sideways, and you, know, you have the light going through. So the magnetic field can go up and down, it can go sideways, it can go at any angles. The angle at which it wiggles is what we call the polarization. This little polarizer blocks all the light except the one that wiggles up and down. So it's what we call the vertical polarization. So now what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to grab mine, so, you know. Hey. I'm on stage, so I got the good stuff. And we're going to hold it so you can read the writing. So yeah. that's the right hold orientation. It up, hold it upward. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that mine. Mine is the exact same thing. So it only, leave, it only let vertical polarized light through. So I'm going to put that in front of Raimi's face. Okay? The light that comes out of those bulbs, they're polarized in any direction. So the one that you see now, you can only see vertical polarization. I'm going to put that in front of Raimi's face. Now, only the vertical is going to go through this one. So every, the, all the light that you can see can go through that one too. Sorry, let me say that again. All the light that goes through Remy's face go through that polarizer, which you know, only keep the vertical, which is what you see. So as soon as I put it in front of him, you'll see no difference. And then I'm going to ask you to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay? So. Don't, don't get excited just yet. <laughs> We're just starting. So right now, normally, you should not be able to see Raimi, okay? And the reason for that is, well, only the vertically polarized light goes through this polarizer. And now when you turn yours, you can only see horizontally polarized. And I think it's fairly clear to say that if you're wiggling up and down, you're not wiggling sideways. So those are the two contradicting properties I'm talking about. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a third one, the exact same thing. At this point, make sure that your polarizer is such that Remy is, you don't see him. And let's be honest, we can all live with a little less Remy. Anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to put a third one right here, and I'm going to slowly turn it, okay? Oh. So what happened there? Well, by putting my polarizer at 45 degrees, well, it only lets the light that wiggles sideways. Well, not sideways, but at, sorry, at 45 degrees. Thank you, Raymond. Your, your job is done. <laughs> and when you really think about it, 45 degrees is vertical and horizontal. Like if I start you know, going up and down like this and Raby picks me up and shakes me sideways, well, you're going to see my hand going like that. 
So this is a superposition principle. It's got nothing quantum mechanical to it. It's, it's only a property of wave. Actually, I could have done the same thing here with a, with a string and start wiggling it. Okay? Where quantum mechanics really get this juicy thing is that rule number two, rule number two of quantum mechanics says, if you even dare looking at what's going on, and by looking we mean measuring, if you even dare measuring your quantum system, rule number one stops working. This is quantum mechanics. That's it. There's nothing else. Okay? If you don't like it, well, deal with it. <laughs> that's, how, that's how nature works. And, you know, it can become, it, no, mathematics can become increasingly messed up. But this gets the essence of quantum mechanics. And those two rules are essentially what my colleagues here at the Institute for Quantum Computing and around the world are trying, are playing with and are trying to develop the new breed of technology that will completely revolutionize, well, the way we work, the way we communicate, and hopefully the way we play. Thank you, Martin. You're very welcome. Thank you.